Greeting to all of you from all of us as we prepare for the John Hancock Sun Bowl, the Washington Huskies, and the Crimson Tide of Alabama. Weather conditions here this afternoon in El Paso, ideal for football. 45 degrees, and that will reach about 48 before the day is over. We have a slight breeze out of the north-northeast, and sunny skies in the forecast. Van Tippen, the great kicker for Alabama, will kick it off to start our Sun Bowl. And deep for the Huskies are Steve Jones, 31, and Andre Riley, 23. Alabama won the coin flip and elected to defer. Washington will take the ball to start this bowl game. We are underway in El Paso. The kick is a short one. It bounces into Jones' hand, and he bolts out to the 30-yard line. About the 29 is where they will spot that ball. Arab, let's introduce the folks to this Husky offense, that balance you talked about. Well, it's a good one. They can run and pass Lonzel Hill at the split end, Washington's all-time receiver. Daryl Frank Franklin, the fl flanker back who is the makes the tough catches. Rodney Jones had 95 catches in two years at tight end. Vince Weathersby and Rick Finney, both of them at the fullback and tailback, are outstanding hard runners, punishing runners. Here's the first offensive play of the game. The tight end now comes set on the left side. Off the long count, Weathersby running to the strong side, and he is brought down by Greg Gilbert, number 56 of the tie. And their leader and tackler as well. That big offensive line you spoke about. And they are big. They've had trouble at the left side. Clay Griffin stepped in for some injured players and has done a nice job. Same way with Garth Thomas. At center, Bern Bostick has been a surprise. He's done a terrific job. Zandowski, an all-pack 10 player, and Kevin Gogan, a big one at 300. This is second and nine for the Huskies. Jones comes through the formation this time. Chandler, pump fake, receiver covered, gets to the right side, buys time, and goes for Franklin and overthrows him incomplete. Kermit Kendrick, the free safety, was the center fielder, and there is a penalty flag down at the 30-yard line, back by the line of scrimmage. But we did see one thing, Brett, about Chandler, who, who can do a lot of scrambling. He's an outstanding football player. You can see he's squeezed out of the pocket here. This is why he's been so dangerous all year. Now watch him scramble out. Looks like he gets a lot of pressure, but he does. Now he's clean out here, but unfortunately he throws the ball, overthrows his receiver. The penalty goes against Washington. Alabama coach Ray Perkins with the rumors swirling about him possibly leaving Alabama. We will cover that story as the afternoon unfolds. They wiped off that penalty, Brent. It's third down at the same spot, I believe. Third and nine for Washington. Chandler will bring this enormous offensive line, which from tackle to tackle, to give you an idea, is larger than Chuck Knox has with the Seattle Seahawks. That's the size we're talking about here this afternoon. Moving the strong side to the right late. Never mindful of putting his center. They run Weathersby, and he does not get the first down. That was Wayne Davis, 58, who hit him first for the Tide, one of those underrated linebackers. And the Huskies go three downs and out, and they will punt. It'll be Thane Cleland, the senior punter. And he's averaged better than 41 yards a punt so far this year. And a dangerous return man is Greg Richardson, one of the wide receivers for Coach Perkins. He's returned one for a score this year. For Alabama. The return is set up. Richardson lets it drift out of bounds. And it will be spotted at the 32 or 33 yard line. Now he marks it down there at the 34 yard line. And let's meet the Alabama offense. Now they have some fine wide receivers. Richardson was the man back on the punt. Their star is from Los Angeles, Albert Bell. He may go in the first round of the NFL draft, too. Howard Cross, a young tight end. They don't throw to him very often. Bobby Humphrey's a great running back. Doug Allen, he's a plugger at fullback. And Mike Shula, whose father, Don Shula, the coach of the Miami Dolphins, is in attendance to watch his son play for the first time at Alabama. That is Humphrey, who went in motion. And Shula will throw it on first down, and it is batted down. That was Tom Erlinson, 
Number 46, the linebacker who got back. And, Era, what did Ray say that he could exploit the linebackers of the Huskies? Exactly. The linebackers, as well as the three deep. They're in three deep here. And what they do is they stretch the defense. They have four receivers against three deep people. If Shula had just thrown this ball a little higher, Cross was wide open. It's the same play that they ran against Notre Dame very successfully. He just underthrew this ball. You look at Cross, wide open right there. Second down and 10 for Alabama. Off the delay, Humphrey is stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Brian Habib led the defensive charge there, and several of his Husky teammates joined in. This is a very tough defense to run on. It really is. They've only given up 89 yards a game to the opposition, and only one team, which was Arizona State, got 145 yards, and that's not many yards. They are a strong football team. Not as quick as Alabama, but they're physically strong. So it will be third and 10. Both defenses showing early domination in this game. Bell in motion. Camouflaging their coverage just to confuse Shula. Humphrey comes underneath. Shula goes long to Bell. It's incomplete. So Shula with great heat from Yates. If Shula could have gotten that ball there just a little quicker, the ball hung. He has Bell open coming across. Watch right here. If he could just deliver this ball with just a little bit more oop, right there, it's a little. Oh gosh, he should have caught that football there. Bo Yates dropping back into coverage, delivered the blow back there that jarred it loose. Now it is Chris Moore hunting for Bama. Oh, it's a good one. Hey, booms one over Riley's head. Wow, what a great punch. Down in the end zone, 66 yards by Alabama punter Chris Moore. He's punting for Bama for the last time, the senior, and he opens up with a 66-yarder. We'll be right back. Go, Bama. James Gang, and he has done a remarkable job at Washington 12 years. He is already the winningest coach in the history of that school. Now first down for Chris Chandler after that booming punt by Moore, and he will run Finney into the heart of the Bama defense. Cornelius Bennett, 97, gets a hand in there, takes part in his first tackle here this afternoon. And let's meet this defense that you'll be seeing here this afternoon for Alabama. Derek Slaughter, he must contain Fenny, along with a superb nose man and Cliff Thomas, 99. Then those linebackers, Randy Rockwell has a lot of plays coming his way. Wayne Davis, Greg Gilbert, and of course the three-time All-American, Cornelius Bennett. Seven, seven, six, six, seven, Second and seven for the Huskies. Chandler will swing it outside to Fenny. Fumble, loose, and it went out of bounds here on the near side. So the possession stays with the Washington Huskies. You watch here from the isolation from the defensive side. You see a lot of pressure coming on. He just dumps the ball out here. Just a quick out. Good coverage by the... And Thomas does a great job there. The, the coverage and adjustments by... And here's Cornelius Bennett right here, number 97, coming to the inside. Picked up by Griffin there. Does a nice job on him. He goes beyond Chandler. It is third and two. The ball is at the Husky 27. And it will throw up over the middle. And a beautiful catch there at midfield. Weathersbeek made a sensational catch, Brent. He reached out and just did a super job. He came out of the backfield watching right from that flanker spot. And did you see how Chandler laid the ball up so he could run under the ball? It was the same type of thing that Shula had to not get enough air under the ball. This ball goes over the linebacker's heads right there and drops it in. Right there's number 20, Cooper, and he can't get to him before he catches the ball. So tailback Vince Weathersby gains 14 yards. The ball is into Alabama territory for the first time with Washington in possession. They're down to the Bama 49. Faking the draw and off the play action. He's got Franklin and it's jarred loose, incomplete at the 25. Great hit by Britton Cooper, number 20. This was a fine throw here, but Franklin couldn't quite hold on to the football. He's announced that right here is Franklin. And you'll watch him. He drives down and gets into that seam. Now, he was nursing an ankle injury, but he seems to be okay here. Now, watch him. He breaks right in behind the linebacker, the cornerback there, and there's the ball right there by Chandler. A little high, but good recovery by the defender. Second and ten for Chandler and the Huskies. <laughs> 
Finney pulling straight ahead and gets nowhere as Cliff Thomas, defensive tackle, led the tide charge. Now here's the rest of that defensive secondary foul about Britton Cooper who made that splendid play. You remember what he did against Carter of Ohio State. Ricky Thomas, he is the strong safety. Kermit Kendry, center field, he intercepted one against Auburn. And Freddie Robinson, he is the standout back there. Number 21, he led the tide in interceptions this year with five. This is third down and about 10. See all the formation changes. They're trying to get the Alabama defensive team to think and make a mistake if they possibly can in their coverage. Great pressure. Incomplete. They were attempting to set a screen, and Alabama, with that quickness, led by Derek Slaughter and Cornelius Bennett, they didn't give them time to set the screen at all. That's exactly what we were talking about, this great speed and quickness of the Alabama team. They're really outstanding. There's Cornelius Bennett, number 97 there, 69 Griffin trying to pick him up. Look at him go right on through. And there's Slaughter, 65, that puts the pressure on. Chandler does well to get the ball away. Zane Cleland hunting again for Washington. He had a 32-yarder. And Richardson, the deep man for Coach Perkins. High snap. Gets off a high punt. And again, it's short. Right inside the 25 takes a Washington roll down inside the 20 yard line and <laughs> look at him saying come on baby keep rolling let's get a few more yards 31 yards and the John Hancock Sun Bowl in the first quarter shows no score Washington and Alabama 45 year old Ray Perkins looking at the line of scrimmage Shula has the crimson tide first and 10 at the line here now is the pitch to the tailback Humphrey, and he is hit by Reggie Rogers. I should say he was swallowed by Rogers. See, they'll move Rogers around. He'll be a right tackle, right outside backer, play the left tackle. They try to put him on anyone that they think is a weak blocker, and he can really put the heat on. Second down and nine. Shula studies the Husky defense. Humphrey sent to the left as a receiver and the fullback Allen did not hold on to the ball that was thrown low there is a penalty marker down on the near side at the line of scrimmage penalty flag is thrown for the second time and it's preliminary indication that it'll go against Perkins so Coach Ray Perkins at the age of 45, this is his fourth year at Alabama, but there are rumors that he might be coaching the Tampa Bay Buccaneers next year. And I asked Ray where he would be coaching next season. As far as I know, I'll be at Alabama for a long time, Brent. Uh, there's been a lot of rumors going around, but uh, I've not been contacted or talked to anybody else about any other job. I'm very happy where I am. So for the time being, Ray Perkins is satisfied to be the head of the Crimson Tide. Penalty was illegal motion. So it's third and nine. Humphrey coming to the right side. Shula scrambling from the pocket is down at the 24-yard line. That was linebacker Tom Erlinson who wrapped him up there. And Alabama will punt. And that will give me an opportunity to correct a piece of misinformation. I know that the fans of the Crimson Tide back there in Alabama are well aware that the young man who booted that punt 66 yards, this is not his last game, and they're happy for it. He's got two more years. He is only a sophomore. 6'4", 195, Chris Moore. Nailed that first one, 66 yards. He gets into this one and sends it high, two toward Andre Riley. He's got it at the 32-yard line. No alley. Cuts back. Good special teams coverage by Alabama. So he has booted this one 43 yards and a seven yard return by Washington. And era so far, the defense is dominating the game. And that's why they're here. A team like Alabama just gives 13 points a game. Washington only gives 15. They give less than 200 yards a game. You've got to have a great defense to be able to have a winning record. Both of them have it. Do you see any changes that the offenses might be able to make, or is it a little early? No, neither one has been able to establish the thing I talked about. Alabama's not been able to establish their running game, and Chandler has not been able to put together any kind of a drive. 
Well, the ball on the Husky 41. Chandler running Finney off the draw. He gets to the 44-yard line. He squeezes three out of that. Now, next Saturday, or I guess I should say this Saturday, actually, the Mazda Gator Bowl Classic, Clemson against Stanford, 12.30 Eastern time. We will start our coverage from Jacksonville, Florida. And that is another big sports afternoon on CBS because college basketball follows it. The Battle of Kentucky, the Wildcats against the Louisville Cardinals. They'll be coming your way after the Gator Bowl. Second and seven for the Huskies. Chandler to Finney, who's tripped up, stays on his feet, and is hammered at the 43. Randy Rockwell bringing him down. Era, we were told by Coach James that this Alabama defense is quick. They're not big, but they're quick. He got tremendous speed, and at that time, you saw the outside linebacker, Anthony Smith, put so much pressure on Chandler that he almost, he did get the ball off, but the, the, uh, the ball carrier was off balance, was not able to get himself regrouped, and uh, could have been a very dangerous play for him. This is a tough defensive team to both run and pass against. It's third and seven for the Huskies. They're at their own 44. Chandler rifles one high for Lonzel Hill incomplete. Boy, he hummed that ball. That had a lot of velocity on it. You watch right here as he comes. Let's watch this uh, as we roll it. He'll come underneath here and break to the outside, and the ball, he's wide open right here, and the ball is thrown over his head. Right there. Back to punt again for the Huskies is Cleveland. Richardson fields it at the 18, and he is hit and down at the 16-yard line. A 39-yard punt and terrific coverage by Ricky Meyer, who threw Richardson for a two-yard loss. So we'll take a break. No score, Washington and Alabama. We'll be right back. Alabama will have the ball on its own 16-yard line here. No score in the John Hancock Sun Bowl. And again, we want to pass along the merriest of Christmases to all of you and hope you're enjoying this holiday action here on CBS. That's the coach of Don Shula. Quarterback Mike Shula of Alabama pitching to his star, Humphrey. Maintains his balance, but couldn't get away from you-know-who. Reggie Rogers, number 51. Let's meet this defense era. We're talking about these fellows. Ray been on them already. He's a, they're, they're a great. Brian, Brian Habe came off of uh, knee surgery and has had a good season. Steve Alford has been outstanding. He's anchored that middle of the line. And Reggie Rogers, everybody knows about Pac-10 Player of the Year. Steve Roberts is their rush end. And we will interrupt that and pick it up momentarily. This is second and seven for the Tide. This is Bobby Humphrey looking for daylight, and it is not there. Erlinson cut it off. Now, the rest of that defensive unit, Coach. Inside linebacker David Rill, leading tackler on the team two years in a row. And his companion, Tom Erlinson, is the number two tackler on the team. And this is their drop-in. Bo Yates has three interceptions. So Shula and Alabama come to the line, third and six. Shula again studying that defensive set. He has two fine wide receivers if he can get the ball to him. He tries to hit Bell, who makes a diving catch at the 29-yard line, and that would give Alabama a first down. Great catch by Albert Bell. Good throw by Mike Shula also. He gets plenty of time here. It comes back into the pocket, and you'll see Bell crossing right here, and there's the ball well thrown. The defender gates his way off of it. Albert Bell is six foot, 170 pounds. Came to Alabama out of the Los Angeles area. He's a senior, and many predict that he will go in the middle or low first round of the NFL draft. He is that talented. So a first down for Alabama. Ball on their own 29-yard line, and they run Humphrey, and he is wrapped up at the 33 by David Rill. 
Well, they finally got a little seam in the line. Up to that time, Humphrey has not seen anything. At least he got a little daylight, but the uh, recovery by the linebackers was excellent. He has carried five times for nine yards, and that's his average this year. They send him out as a receiver, but they throw to Allen, the fullback, in underneath a well-conceived play. He is short of a first down, but close as the nose man, Steve Albert, closed in. See, now they're going to go to the huddle this time. Last time, they didn't go to the huddle. They wanted, to be, wanted the Huskies to be in the same defense they were previously. Now they were going to do it again, but they decided that they would go back with third and short and make sure that they get a play that they can uh, grind the first down out on. Richardson comes out, two tight ends in third and short. Allen for the first down. To the Alabama 41-yard line with five minutes left here in the first quarter. And Washington and Alabama are scoreless. How about that Husky secondary? How much talent is there? Well, that left cornerback is Tony Zachary. He's had four interceptions and a fine tackler. Daryl Hall worked his way into the starting lineup about mid-year. Tim Peoples, Sporting News All-American at the free safety, and Des Moines Williams at the right cornerback. Strong to the right side. And off a play fake, they hit the fullback underneath again. And he is close to midfield before his run out by Daryl Hall. Nice little bootleg pass that uh, I remember when I was coaching, I used that play many, many times. The fullback slides out with a fake of the halfback back to the right. And the bootleg pass works beautifully. Second down and one. Both wide receivers, Richardson and Bell, are in the lineup. And Shula to throw on second and one. Again, throws underneath to Allen. He gets a first down to the Washington 46-yard line. Allen just slow blocks in the backfield and then slips through after all the linebackers have dropped off into zone coverage. Shula picked him up and dumped the ball off to him. And there I see that they used Bo Wright. They had replaced Doug Allen, and they sent the junior fullback, number 40, in. Bo Wright, and they sent him out as the pass receiver that time. There is number 40. Both of them, about five, ten. First down, and Shula, under pressure, steps up to avoid the rush. I don't know how he got out of the grasp that time, as Dennis Brown had come in on him, and the pass is incomplete. You're right, Brent. Dennis Brown put a lot of pressure on I don't know how Mike Shula escaped this one. Watch right here, you get a good shot of it. He steps, looks like Brown's got him, but he shakes him and he has the presence to throw the ball. He takes a real shot after it too. I can't quite see the number on that. Boy, Shula took a shot there. He's a tough kid. Second and 10 for Alabama. Humphrey hit right at the line of scrimmage. Albert the nose man. What we're seeing here, Brent, is that apparently Alabama doesn't feel that they can establish that running game. They haven't thus far, and they've had to go to the air, I think, much more than they really wanted to. Normally in the season, they passed about over 70%, of, I mean, ran over 70% of the time, and they prefer to establish the run game, but it looks like they're gonna have to rely on Shula, Bell, and Richardson, and the rest of the pass receivers. They have rushed eight times and passed eight times. This is third and nine, and they go to two tight ends, one setback, and they'll throw out of that formation. Knocked down, it was Yates who had dropped back into his zone, and the linebacker again batted down another pass. That's two fine plays he's made in the secondary. That's an excellent job. Yates has three interceptions. As I said, he was the drop in. You see Shul in the pocket here. Right, Reggie Rogers got in there, but there's Yates knocking the ball down. And there's Rogers right there, number 51, 60, neighbors picking him up. I'm sorry, that's Johnson, Haas Johnson. Moore, set to punt again for Alabama. The two punters are moving center stage here on this Christmas afternoon, aren't they? Another beauty. High, and it'll go back into the end zone. That's a 45-yard punt. 
So we'll be back in El Paso. Alabama and Washington are scoreless with 316 to go in the first. Well, our colleague John Dockery has something down on the sideline, so let's go to him. And Brent, you wouldn't believe the exchange when the offensive line, the offense from Alabama came off the field. The offensive line coach, Jimmy Fuller, got them together and he said to them, what the heck is going on here? Can someone tell me? There is confusion with the Alabama offense. Now back to you, Brent. Well, they've had to make do. A couple of lineup changes. There was a suspension of one player by Coach Perkins. That was King. And then Frew Morgan has been in and out because of injuries in that spot. Larry Rose can't play. So the group on the field for the Crimson Tide having some difficulty here. First and 10 for the Huskies. Ball on their own 20-yard line. 3.16 to go in the first quarter. On first down, he hits Weathersby. Weathersby down at the 27-yard line. That'll leave Washington with about three yards for a first down. They just put him in a flank position. He just came off and read the linebackers, turned away from the coverage, which was zone, and uh, Chandler hit him. A couple of the great battles going on down there at the line of scrimmage would include Rod Jones, the superb tight end of Washington, matched up against Cornelius Bennett, if they can get that matchup. Jones switches over. And they run Benny, the fullback, straight ahead behind the strong side. And you can see the Crimson Tide ready for that running play, and Cornelius Bennett was not to be driven out by Rod Jones. Let's take a look at that, Era. This is a matchup between Bennett and Jones. Bennett here and Jones here. Two outstanding football players. The play is just up the middle, and Jones is just trying to rake through and keep Bennett out, but look at him step back to the inside and make that play. Bennett never quitting on a play. Even when he's hit, you'll notice in the films that he'll spin, roll off, keep coming. He is a great one. Third and short. That full house looked by Washington. Three fullbacks in there, and they get the first down out to the 35. That was Tony Covington, number 39. He is sent in specifically for that formation, along with Aaron Jenkins. And the two will now leave, and the Huskies, with ball control, have a first down. And they've used that same formation. You remember, Brent, when he played Ohio State in Seattle in the opening game. They were very successful with that on short yardage and goal line attack. We'll see that again if they get inside the 10-yard line. Two excellent defenses. That's Washington's second first down. That's all. 1.35 to go in the first quarter. Here's Weathersby trying to cut back, and he slipped through. He made quite a bit out of nothing that time. You know, Weathersby is an underrated football player. He's, he's had 880 yards this year, but he's a power-type guy. He's a punishing-type runner. Not that flashy guy, but really a good blocker. Well, Cornelius Bennett's only the second player at Alabama to be a three-time All-American, and here he is showing you the hustle that made him the winner of the Lombardi Trophy, even though the play is away from him. He'll go over to the far side and try to help out. He gets Weathersby from behind and yanks him down. Second and seven. Franklin is in motion. Benny fumbles and dives back on the ball at the 38-yard line. Ball was loose momentarily. Great reaction by Don James fullback. It really was. Oh, yeah, that ball was really loose. It bounced back up, and he recovered. Had good reaction. To turn back to recover that ball, it would have given Alabama great field position. Watch here. He has it. Just as he's hit right here, the ball slips out, bounces back. He turns back to get it, but it bounced favorably for him. That was Greg Gilbert. Young Alabama linebacker who jarred that ball loose. He's a sophomore from Decatur, Alabama. He's the man who's going to step in there and be the big play guy, I think, with Cornelius Lee. Either that or Derek Thomas, both of them, superb young linebackers. Time ticking away, first quarter. Chandler on the third down, locks it up for Finney, incomplete and out of bounds. There was a collision between Finney and the defensive back, but it was incidental. Kermit Kendrick was coming over. He was looking at the football. He was not taking a shot at Finney at all. No, he was right on the sideline. It was uh, good judgment. You see right here, Kermit Kendrick comes over, number 27, just as Finney is looking for the ball. And he's right. He's inbounds. And watch him take his hands away here. Pulls it back away. Well, it's incomplete. I've seen some that have been called. Number 17, Greg Richardson. Richardson, the deep man, to return this Cleveland punt as the final seconds tick away here in the first quarter. 
Punt is out of bounds with no time showing on that clock. The official will spot the ball where it went out of bounds. And on this Christmas afternoon, we've come to the end of the first quarter. Alabama and Washington are scoreless in the John Hancock Sun Bowl. We'll be back after this message and a word from your local stations. Well, yesterday, our colleague John Dockery had an opportunity to talk to Reggie Rogers, who was the best defensive lineman in college football this year. Here's what Reggie had to say about his performance and where he hopes to go in the draft. That's uh, very important for me. It's a chance for me to uh, show uh, the pro uh, scouts uh, how I can play against a better opponent and outside the league. Where do you expect to go in the draft? I'm hoping to go pretty high. How yeah. high? Yeah. I'd like to go first. <laughs> well, Reggie, you're showing the scouts something today. Alabama was held to 46 total yards in that opening quarter. Now, 51 in that defensive line will move around as often as Cornelius Bennett does for Alabama. On first down, they run the tailback, and Humphrey, with his biggest daylight, shot through that defensive line. And Tim Peoples, the safety, bringing him down. Where are your thoughts on that first quarter? Well, uh, my my thoughts are that these two teams are outstanding teams, well coached. I watched them during the course of the week. Their preparation was excellent. They're fundamentally sound. And we're seeing that here. It's a defensive struggle. Humphrey trying to cut back is cut off, wrapped up by the Huskies. Number 51 is in there on that stop too. Reggie, you know, overcame a lot of tragedy. This year and his family, I'm sure that many of you are aware that Don Rogers, who was playing with the Cleveland Browns, was an older brother. He passed away tragically because of a cocaine overdose. And for a while, Reggie thought that he might give up the game of football. But I spoke to him about it, and he said, the best thing I did is come back. He said, it has taken my mind off it, and I have forgotten those troubles, and I've enjoyed the season. On third and short, Humphrey gets the first down. Spence free has gone. Bobby Humphrey breaks one at the Sun Bowl. explosion by the running back coach Ray Perkins says is the finest running back he has ever been around and that includes the National Football League this young man is only a sophomore now it's Van Tiffin he adds the extra point and why not he's never missed one for the Crimson Tide well now you know why he has 1471 yards and 17 touchdowns coming into this football game you see here the two, the outside linebacker as well as the cornerback Zachary have a shot at him in a short down, a short yardage situation. There's Yates number three, Zachary number 25 right there. They have shots. He just turns inside, spins. There's number 26 people's misses and away Humphreys goes. He is one great back. And I, and just as you just mentioned, Brent, when Perkins said this is the best he's ever had, he's saying a lot. And he just shows you why he's the best, too. Sophomore Bobby Humphrey explodes for the first touchdown, and Alabama leads by seven. So there's the sophomore Bobby Humphrey who exploded, Era. It's a short yardage situation, and Rodgers is right there and gets blocked. But Yates forces it just the way he's supposed to, but the secondary, which includes Rill, Zachary, and Peoples, misses. Right there is Rill. 25 is Zachary, will come to the outside, and then Peoples, this right here is Zachary, Peoples is here, Real is there. Now watch as they have their shots, one, two, and away Humphreys goes. Great running. Once Humphrey gets a step, you are not gonna catch that young man from behind. And Alabama scores the first touchdown in this game with 13.45 to go in the first half. Tiffin with the ball on the tee. Another short kickoff. Fielded. 
Steve Jones bobbles it, comes up with it, and gets to the 26-yard line where Washington will put it in play, down a touchdown. Let's go downstairs to John Dockery. John, that was some touchdown run by Humphrey, wasn't it? Oh, uh, lightning struck, Brent, and right now I'm here with Jim Nance. We're going to talk halftime. What Christmas goodies do you have for us? Nice story about Lonzel Hill, the wide receiver from Washington. His relationship with his father, who you may remember, J.D. Hill, running away from you when he played for the Buffalo Bills. He was a great wide receiver himself. He helped drive me out of the NFL. <laughs> I'm going to try to go back up there where you were before the game, if you'll let me borrow your sneakers. Anytime, Jim. Now let's get back to the action. Brent? John, they have changed running backs. Chandler off a of play fake, rolls, keeps it, and he is out to the 37-yard line. A first down run of 11 yards by quarterback Chris Chandler. He's the junior from Everett, Washington. And Lonzel Hill that time was trying to run on past Robinson. Number 21, the cornerback, who is a great one. He's looking for him. You'll see Robinson stays with his man, forces Chandler to run with it, and does pick up a first down the setbacks now for the Huskies Tony Covington is in at fullback and Steve Jones is the tailback 31 goes back into the tail spot in that eye formation and off the delay they run Jones and Derek Slaughter that was a slaughter down there on the 37 yard line Boy, that Alabama team really comes off their blocks they can knock them down, but they're back on their feet, reacting to the ball. They're very tough to, to, to sustain any kind of a block. Second down and nine here for the Huskies against Cornelius Bennett and friends. Washington's overloaded to the wide side of the field with the line. Now the balance is back up again. Bobble the ball, and Jones wraps it up there at the 32-yard line. So that will put Washington in third and passing situation. Coach James unhappy with what he's seen out here this afternoon so far. Well, he's done a remarkable job at the University of Washington, and they're a good football team. They're fundamentally sound, and they got a guy like Chandler. Anytime you got a guy like Chandler, you're dangerous. Third and 15 for Chandler. Rolling to the left. And in hot pursuit and bringing him down was Anthony Smith, number 94. There is that speed that we have been talking about. <laughs> He's a tackle. I mean, he ran Chandler down. Guys, six foot four, 245 pounds. Anthony Smith runs down Chandler, and Chandler's got good speed. Cleland to punt for the Huskies. And that Alabama defense stifling the Washington attack here so far. High deep punt. Sending Richardson inside the 20. Had a little bit of a seam and got out to the 37-yard line. That's a 50-yard punt, and they're a 17-yard return. So that's a little better punt by Cleland that time. Of course, there's almost a little seam here, but what looks like it, it finally closes up right there. Richardson sees it right there, pops it through. He protects the ball well as he falls to the ground, which is so important for anybody that has it. Well, we've got a timeout, an injured player down on the field. That is Chris Good of Alabama. So we'll take a break and we'll be right. Back at El Paso with Alabama leading Washington. Seven to nothing. Bobby Humphrey exploding 64 yards. And on first down this time, Sheila throws to Bell. And Bell is to the 44-yard line. That's a 19-yard gain for the Crimson Tide. Well, he was wide open. The defender was giving, giving him so much cushion. It's a good fake here by Shula. Just takes the ball. It's an out pattern to Bell. Look, there's no one underneath right there. I don't think that they expected a pass. Zachary finally brings him down. Bama on the move. 
up by seven and that first touchdown seems to have lifted the spirits of this offensive unit Shula going back deep for Bell he was open but he overthrew him well you see how smart that is Bell goes down runs it out on him so he figures that he's not going to give it to him again he fakes the out goes right up the field and just overthrown by Shula good strategy Shula on the afternoon error is 5 of 11 for 46 yards. End zone shot again. They just burned Zachary on an out pattern, figuring he's going to come up to try to stop it, and Bell runs right by him. He's open, but it's just overthrown. But good coaching. Albert Bell comes out. Greg Payne, number six, replaces him. 82, Clay Whitehurst is the other wide receiver. He goes in motion. And they run Bo Wright off the delay. That was Brian Habib, 91, who led the defensive charge there for Coach James of the Huskies. This will leave Alabama in a third and 10 with the ball at the 44-yard line. The way Humphrey exploited that one side, you would have to think that before this afternoon is over, Alabama will use the end around if they can get Yates or somebody back up to crash like they did on that touchdown play. Now they bring Jelks to the left side. Shula wants him down the sideline. It's out of bounds. He was covered by Daryl Hall, number 40. Gene Jelks came out of the backfield went in motion and was the pass receiver down the near side. That's what Alabama likes to do. They like to go to four receivers and two on both sides, split the deep secondary as much as they can, either drive them deep or hook them up on possession passes. And uh, it's a predictable pass, but they've been successful with it during the course of the year. Well, here is more. Riley, the deep man. Short and high. He tried to hang one high and not drive it into the end zone that time. And instead, he got off his worst punt of the afternoon. Out of bounds on the far side. Feast or famine with the young punter from Alabama. A six-yard punt. We'll be right back. We're at the Sun Bowl in El Paso. Alabama leading Washington 7-0 with nine and a half minutes to go in the first half. And Boy, I'll tell you, a man who's happy to be watching his son, Mike Shula, play is Miami Dolphin head coach Don Shula. He's standing by with John Dockery, so let's go to John and the coach. Thank you, Brent. And Don, it's not Coach Don Shula right now. It's Papa Don Shula. How, Boy, what's I'm it like? Really, I'm really suffering. Uh, every play, I'd rather be coaching. How would you assess the perform performance so far? Well, it's a tough, tight ball game. Washington is a, a strong football team defensively. They've made a lot of good plays, and Alabama had to run great run by Bobby Humphrey, and we're up by one touchdown, but uh, you know it's a tight ball game, and Mike's working hard. I'm pulling for him on every throw. You know, I, I get the sense. I have, as I mentioned before to you, a 12-year-old daughter who's a pretty hot shot squash player. I go to see her. I'm a nervous wreck. What's your feeling here? Well, there's nothing that you can do except, uh, you know, just pull the things go right, and uh, your emotions are into it, and you're trying to think of uh, all the things that could happen, but you really have absolutely no control. When you're coaching, at least you can do something about it, but here you're you're strictly a fan and a parent, and you're pulling for your kid. Well, we'll keep an eye on him now. Let's get back to Brent. All right, John. Thank you very much. I'll tell you, the young quarterback has as much class as his father. You should see the way the youngsters on that Alabama team look up to him. And he's got a great relationship with them, too. It's a real nice family feeling down here with this squad. First and ten now for the Huskies. Chandler off the fake, keeps it, and gets outside, and he moves to the 47. He's not passing the ball very well here so far but he has shown some running ability. Well, he's versatile. They can run the option with him. He can bootleg well. And uh, his average certainly isn't up to the standard he set during the course of the season thus far, but it's early in the game yet. Three of eight for 36 yards, and he has run three times for 19 more. Cornelius Bennett has momentarily come to the sideline. This is second and two. Benny and Weathersby, the running backs for the Huskies. And stepping inside for the first down is Big Penny. Blasts his way to the 44-yard line of Alabama with Chris Goo, number 36. You're looking at a guy at 6'3", 242 pounds, and makes you pay the price. As I say that said earlier, they're not fancy runners, just straight ahead, 
The blockers stay with the Alabama defenders, drive them beyond as they try to pursue, and Finney, who is a real load, makes them pay the price. And a first down following that run for the Huskies, and trail it by a touchdown. This is Weathersby sweeping to the left. And he is ridden out of bounds on that far sideline at the 38-yard line by Greg Gilbert. Number 56 took Weathersby out of bounds. But not before he ripped off six yards. And this will be a second and four. Cornelius returned after being out for a play, huh? Well, they hide him. You see, here he is. It's a middle linebacker spot. Now he comes to the strong backer, but he's away from the play and watch him pursue. Second down and four for the Huskies. Weathersby. He is short of the first down. And that was Cornelius Bennett. I guess that they would prefer that if we're going to hide him, Washington says hide him over an bench a little more. You got to be careful when you're the contained man. They got burned against Auburn in that game on a reverse, a couple of reverses. When you close down like that, there's no contain. You're vulnerable to the reverses. Well, here is a third and two for the Huskies. The ball is at the Alabama 36, that full house backfield, all three fullbacks. And they run Jenkins. Jenkins gets the first down for Washington. They're doing what they can to run away from Jenkins, but Jenkins hides. Bennett, I'm sorry. Bennett, but you see this power attack right here with the three fullbacks. Awful tough to stop and keep you from getting the first down. But no question that Cornelius Bennett is a big factor in this football game. Ball is at the Alabama 34-yard line. Washington down by a touchdown. Continue to match up Jones against Bennett. Play fake. Cornelius coming. Incomplete. And the receiver is complaining about interference over on the far sideline. Brian Slater insisting that he had been pushed. See what we can see right here. Well, the ball's not catchable. It's not a catchable ball. It has to be a catchable ball. Second and ten. They put Slater in that slot on the right side. Chandler has him open again underneath. Steps back inside and he's out of bounds at the nine yard line. Lonzel Hill and Slater were in the same area with Slater right underneath him, the receiver. You see Slater right here, but watch the key to this thing is that Chandler fakes the option first and he draws the defenders up. Slater will go in the seam behind the man that drives him off, which is Lonzel Hill. Watch here. You see he fakes the option down the line. Slater breaks in behind Lonzel. Look at the seam. You see the defenders came up to stop that option. Well executed play. This is a first and goal for the Huskies. <laughs> Benny up the middle, and Alabama takes him on after about a one yard gain. Derek Slaughter, number 65, led the charge against Coach James Fullback. Kurt Jarvis, number 95, has been a figure in there, too. They don't move him around very much. Get your hands. Perkins would dearly love to see the Huskies put it on the carpet here, wouldn't he? It's funny when we asked him yesterday about who he communicates with. He said, I got three switches there. He says, one, I listen to the offense, one to the defense. When they get excited up there, I turn them off. And the third switch, he wants to listen to you, right? <laughs> Second down and goal. It's Weathersby on the right wing. Benny, and he is hit right now. Great defensive play by Cliff Thomas, number 99. He was not cool of it. He certainly wasn't. He penetrated and made the play before he had a chance to even move. Let's see what happens in there. Trying a little delay trap. Oh, he beats the left tackle, who is Griffith. Just runs right by him. Third and goal. But now the ball is back at the Alabama 14-yard line. To see what kind of a pass play the Huskies come up with here. Incomplete. 
Slater was open but briefly. Slater just breaks down and breaks into the end zone here and is open right here. A lot of pressure on Chandler right here. He has to step up into the pocket. There's the throw, and it's right there. It looked like he had it. He's a great receiver, but unfortunately that time for the Huskies, he dropped it. Jeff Jager, who has kicked more field goals than anybody in NCAA competition, attempting a 31-yarder to get the Huskies on the board. He's got it. Jeff Jager gives the Huskies three points, and with six minutes to go here in the first half, Alabama leads Washington seven to three. Welcome, Governor. We hope you're having a good time. Welcome back to El Paso, and Era. We get late word. You know, this is the year that the NCAA instituted drug testing for the bowl games. And Oklahoma has lost All-American linebacker Brian Bosworth for the Orange Bowl, along with two teammates, all three tested positive for steroids. Now, Arkansas has lost senior linebacker David Dudley also for that game. So several teams are losing players because they tested positively for steroids. Meanwhile, Alabama and Washington have a full complement on hand for this game. And, Era, your thoughts about the steroid drug testing policy? I think it's the right direction to go. You've got to put a stop to this. And I think by doing the testing, I think it's got to slow it down. I, I, the drug situation has gotten to be a real difficult one on a national basis. And I'm glad to see that they've done, a number of schools have done a lot of good things as far as trying to bring it to a halt. <laughs> Well, here this afternoon, Washington gets on the board with a field goal after Humphrey's 64-yard touchdown for Alabama, and Cleland, the punter, kicks it off, and he possesses a strong leg, knocking that one completely out of the end zone. So on the touchback, it'll come out to the 20-yard line. And a reminder that this Sunday, of course, the key thing will be the wild-card playoff games. And in the NFC, we're going to be looking at the two quarterbacks, Jim Everett of the Los Angeles Rams and Jay Schrader of the Washington Redskins. Our coverage of that game from RFK in Washington is 3.30 Eastern time. And that's what time we'll start with the NFL today. From the eye, Shula handing off to Humphrey, who puts his helmet down and barrels behind the right side of his offensive line. And Steve Roberts, number 94, brings him down. So again, recounting in case you just came back into the room and you heard the end of that announcement. Oklahoma's great linebacker, Brian Bosworth, is ineligible for the Orange Bowl because he tested positively for steroid use. And there are several other players who will not be on the field and in other games as well. Here on second down, Mike Shula throwing to the near side to Richardson, and that was Art Malone, number four, who was defending on the play. It's a good thing he did overthrow him because the coverage by Malone was excellent. Could have been picked off. Well, there is Art Malone, and yes, he is the son of the former Arizona State NFL player by the same name. J.D. Hill has two sons here, and you're going to meet them at halftime. Jim Nance has a special feature on them, and I know you're going to enjoy that on this Christmas afternoon. 5.19 to go here in the first half. Alabama with the ball and the lead, 7-3. Drops it off over the middle to his fullback, Doug Allen. That was that double wing look again with four receivers, two on each side, and they brought the fullback out of the backfield, but they needed 10 yards, and he wasn't able to get it. As you see, comes right back into the pocket, and Allen will slip right there, number 46 underneath, but it wasn't enough. There's Rill, number 38, coming in to make the play. Another punting opportunity for Moore. It was the kind of day he's had. He hit one 66 yards, and his last one was only six. Riley says, what are you going to show me this time? High, good punt. Given that coverage unit time, he signals for the fair catch on the run. He comes up with it. What a dangerous fair catch that is, Coach. <laughs> That's the ones that make the football coaches, I'll tell you, nervous. 35-yard punt that time. 
Washington's ball, four and a half. Era, other than the fact that they bogged down at the 10-yard line going in, Washington was moving the ball more effectively in that last series they against they're, Alabama. They're mixing it up. They ran an option play. They ran a little draw play in there. They hit a couple of passes by faking the, the run on that option and hit Slater. And it looks like they're starting to put a little pressure on the Alabama defense. They can't get the ball into the hands of Lonzel Hill yet, however. He's out to the left. This is Franklin in motion. Both wide receivers will be at the top of your screen. And they run the fullback, Finney. Runs hard to the 43-yard line. Finney has been bothered by injuries throughout his career up at Washington. But when he's healthy, he's one of the better fullbacks in the Pac-10. Second and five. Shifting at the line, trying to get blocking pressure on Cornelius Bennett. Dropping it off, and because of the heat from you know who, that pass was incomplete. Cornelius Bennett was charging Chandler that time. He really comes hard. He's at the right outside linebacker spot. There's Jones who's going to go into receiving. Number 77 con uh, that uh, couldn't quite see there. But anyway, the pressure by Cornelius Bennett all year. That's why he's been an All-American for three years. He's some kind of player. Watching that, you would have to think that they're going to have to keep the tight end at home. That they will not be able to use him as a receiver because the tackle couldn't step outside and handle Bennett at that time when he was coming. This is third and five. Chandler going to Franklin. Intercepted. Beautiful interception by Kendrick, number 27 for Bama. Well, that's, that's as good a punt on third down if you don't get it because... Okay, here we go. We're going to go right straight down the field and try to beat him on an up pattern. Now, let's see the coverage on it as he comes back. The free safety, which is back, recovers to the ball. He's right in the middle of the field. And he comes recovering back to the inside. But you see here, for a, from a coaching standpoint and a strategy standpoint, you don't mind on third down that you had an, down at the eight-yard line an interception. Two tight ends. Perkins will go to work on the clock here at the 345 mark. He does not have good field position. He runs Allen right straight ahead on first down. The problem here is that he needs a couple of first downs or Washington may get the ball back in decent field position. And that first down only squeezed out a yard. This will be second and nine, a tough call coming up against James' defense. You're always under pressure when you have the ball deep in your own territory. Any kind of an error, any kind of a turnover, a penalty, any, any of those things can really be costly. Humphrey the tailback with the game's lone touchdown, and it was a beautiful 64-yard explosion. He'll get an opportunity to the short side this time, but he will not get away from Rill. David Rill, number 38, wrapped him up. And you can see that uh, Ray Perkins doesn't want to take too many chances down in here. There's uh, 255, 250 left to go in the quarter. Let's see whether or not he wants Shula to put the ball up or not. An indication as to how well these two teams are coached. Neither of them has wasted a timeout yet as we come down to the two and a half minute mark here of the first half. This is third and ten. Little inside shuttle. Allen loses it. No, no, it's an incomplete pass. Good call, Larry. You were on top of that one. <laughs> well, he threw it forward, I mean. <laughs> well, the Washington fans thought, hey, that's a fumble. We get the ball. No, no. You can see any time. This shovel pass has been used throughout the entire season in college football. And he deals the ball forward, but it's a little high. And Allen doesn't quite feel the ball, but it's just an incomplete pass there. And Moore will punt for the sixth time today. And standing back at his own end zone, let's see what the Huskies elect to do. He bangs another one deep. Oh, he's a good kicker. Rodney Riley to the 36. A penalty marker down on the near side. 
He battles his way into Alabama territory. That was a 54-yard punt, but he outpunted the coverage with a 16-yard return, and there was a penalty flag over here. So we'll wait for the officials. They are all from the Southwest Conference. Referee Frank Shepard here leading this crew, and uh, he signals the clip. Going against Washington. So there's the young man who exploded for the Alabama touchdown. And John Dockery asked him yesterday, who are the Alabama running backs you respected when you were growing up? Well, one of the guys that I'm with is Tony Nathan. Uh, he was a good running back, and I liked his style of running. And to be a running back at Alabama and the record that I have broken makes me very proud because, you know, you have so many players at Alabama that can play the same position that you play, such as Gene Jelks and uh, Kerry Good and most of those guys. So uh, to be a good running back at Alabama, it's got to be a good feeling for him. Era, he stayed close to that program, too. He certainly did. As a matter of fact, he parked cars there at Legion Field. Also sold Cokes upstairs to get into the ball game. Wanted to be in the upper deck all the time because you could see the game better from up there. Hey, after that run, he's got the number one parking place, all the Cokes he wants. <laughs> and there's going to be a lot, of, a lot of youngsters admire what he is oh, going to be. Course, yeah, the, the records he'll set there. On first down with the Huskies trailing after the penalty. Chandler attempting to get it off inside, and Cornelius Bennett was in there. Boy, was he in there. Woo. The race says he plays with great intensity the entire football game. There he is, right there, coming in, trying to put the pressure on, number 97. And he hits him just as he throws the ball. The arm is going forward, but that's Cornelius Bennett doing a number on Chandler. You see him get off that block oh. and deliver that blow. Boy, he'll be one of the first three or four players drafted. Chandler on second and ten for the Huskies. Quickly out here to Franklin. They were much too soft on him, and so they simply threw in underneath the coverage. He gets a first down on a 13-yard gain. Era, why was Freddie Robinson so soft over here? I don't think it was Freddie Robinson as much as there's no underneath coverage. There's no one in this area right here. Look at that. And as a result of that, Chandler picks it up and takes advantage. I think they were in a coverage that they had an error by someone on the inside. Absolutely. You wouldn't stay off a receiver like that, and Chandler alertly picked it up and got the ball into his hands. Now on first down off the play fake. Then it was coming again. He tried to get his tight end. Well, I'll tell you what impresses you about Cornelius Bennett is the way he will eventually come off the blocker. You can't hold him out very long. Exactly. You've got to either set a screen or draw on him to slow him down. He just keeps coming. You see, you see what he's done. Not only that, in the addition to the sacks, he's created a lot of neg negative yardage on runs. Six fumbles caused. Chandler throwing five of 16 against this Alabama Heat for 73 yards and one interception. This is a quarterback who threw 20 touchdown passes for the Huskies. Can't get the ball to Lonzel Hill yet in the first half. Steps up in the pocket, throws complete. Weathersby loses it, but it is wrapped up by the Washington center Vern Brostick coming over to jump on that ball at the 130 mark here in the first half. Now they're going to have third and long here. They finally are going to take a timeout, I think. Well, while we sort this out, Era, let's take everybody up to Seattle and take a look at the Washington campus. Chris, and what your friends would like to see now at last minute and a half is a little <laughs> nice long completion to Lonzel Hill. You know, you can see with the pressure that the Alabama team is putting on the Chandler now instead of being nice and smooth back there He's rushing things because he knows he doesn't have much time and it's thrown his timing off a little bit Third and seven for the Huskies they trail Alabama 7-3 time running down in the first half for the John Hancock Sun Bowl <laughs> Throws over the middle to Franklin incomplete <laughs> There is a penalty marker down. Roughing. Against Alabama. Mm. That's a tough penalty. Third down. Automatic first down. 
and give him another opportunity with a minute and 29. That is a tough penalty. Was it Cornelius Bennett? I could not see because I was looking downfield to see what happened to Franklin. Ball will be spotted there. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Automatic first down. Yeah, we get word from our producer, Rick Lasavita, that was not Cornelius Bennett. It was one of the interior linemen who was whistled on that play for the infraction. So at 129, and a fresh set of downs here for Chris Chandler. Hits Weathersby, the running back who came out as a receiver, to the 26-yard line. That's gone, a gain of six yards. And they've gone to their hustle huddle here. They're not going to go back to the huddle. They're going to call the plays at the line of scrimmage. Clock is running. They still have two timeouts left, though. Lonzel Hill at the bottom of your screen is number one. And they throw underneath to Jones, the tight end, out of bounds at the 19-yard line. That's Rod Jones. He's 6'4", 240 from Richmond, California, one of the better tight ends in the country, and that's his first catch. He just crosses all the way across from left to right. You see number 84 there going across. And he does get the ball out of bounds here. Robinson finally gets him out. He kills the clock, but he gets a chance, gives him a chance, the Huskies a chance, get in the huddle, regroup, call a play that they want to call. One minute and two timeouts, 19 yards to negotiate, a first down for the Huskies. Backs are out as receivers, and he's got Finney. And Finney is hit by Ricky Thomas. Number 34 leading the defense. And the Huskies have called a timeout. That will leave them with one timeout. James wants to confer. Meanwhile, Slater, one of the wide receivers over on the far side. Well, coming up at halftime, J.D. Hill and Sons, a special story. Jim Nance will bring that to you. And we will also present a Christmas celebration from El Paso. There was so far, it has been a defensive game. Don James was able to get a field goal. One of the things that the staff would have to consider right now is how far they will go before they will allow Jager to attempt a second field goal if they can't get a touchdown out of this. Well, they only have one uh, timeout left, so they're going to have to be careful. This is the touchdown right here that Humphrey did such a marvelous job right there. He shook two tackles. Then num people's number 26 will also lose him right there. Look at that spin, and he goes for the score. An outstanding back. That has been the big play in this football game. And the lone touchdown. On this drive, the Huskies have come down the field underneath coverage. Short passes. This is second and seven. Off a of play fake. Great pressure. Incomplete. And roll tied indeed. The heat was on that time, and Cornelius Bennett was coming. I mean, he hit Chandler that time before he could get it off. That's why that ball was not thrown very accurately. Watch here. Just a tailback action. Right there's oh. the contact. Right there before he can really get set. Well, you get him coming from the backside. Doesn't he remind you of Lawrence Taylor? When you stand next to him, as you see, Hill is open here momentarily, but there's just no time to get him the ball. And that's because Bennett is leading such a savage pass rush here. Now it is third and seven and 49 seconds. Chandler with time going to Slater incomplete at the goal line. Freddie Robinson and Kermit Kendrick with coverage for Bama. The Huskies have been close, but they haven't gotten the touchdown yet. They've had a couple of passes that could have been. We'll take another look. Slater just breaks it to the out. It looks like Chandler throws a good ball, but it's just beyond him just to say it would have been a tough catch on the part of Slater. And it's field goal time for Jager again. This time a 34-yarder for the All-American field goal specialist this year. 80 career field goals broke John Lee's NCAA record. He's one for one here. Now he's two for two. He's made it a one-point game, and that's about as close as we expected this one to be. And Alabama seven, Washington six, and 
38 seconds to go, but the performance by Cornelius Bennett in this game, and isn't it somewhat ironic that on this day that Cornelius Bennett is standing up against superb competition and showing everyone what he can do, that the linebacker he's being compared with this year coming out of college, Brian Bosworth, has been suspended for Oklahoma and will not play in the Orange Bowl. Something for you to think about because there's been that discussion, which one of those two would you take? They are different as linebackers. Bennett, you've been watching that great speed coming from the outside and impact. Bosworth playing on the inside for Oklahoma, more of a plug up the gap type of linebacker and, and meet you head on. But you could not play any better than Cornelius Bennett has here he's in had the first half. A tremendous half. You know, he's got four or five speed, he's got agility and quickness, and he's got the size that we talked about. And there's no question, as you pointed out, Brent, that there could have been a touchdown pass to Lonzel Hill if if Bennett had not put the pressure on Chandler. Cleveland to kick it off for the Huskies. 38 seconds to go here in the first half. We hope you're enjoying this Christmas Day special on CBS this afternoon. And again, he takes the kickoff into the end zone. Bounced off of Humphrey and was wrapped up there by a teammate. Chester Braggs went down and said, let's down this officially and not leave a loose ball down here in the end zone. Now, Errol, what about the Mazda Gator Bowl Classic on Saturday? What about the Clemson-Stanford game? That's going to be a fine game. I know that uh, Pay is out, Stanford quarterback, but Stanford comes up with great quarterbacks all the time. They'll have Greg Ennis in there, and he led the uh, Stanford ball club to the win over Arizona out in Japan and led that winning drive. Mike Shula. Brings Alabama to the line at the 20. And here is Humphrey. Straight ahead, Tom Erlinson wrapping him up. And the seconds ticking away here in the first half. Washington with one timeout left. And Alabama with all three. Alabama with a one-point lead. Ray Perkins preferring to let it run down here rather than risk a turnover. He'll be content to take that one-point lead on into the locker room at El Paso. Don James will be thinking about how to squeeze a couple of touchdowns out against Perkins tremendous defense here this afternoon so that'll do it that'll wrap up the first half Don James efficient organized looks at his watch wants to know exactly how many minutes before he's got to bring this team back on the field for the second half but he hasn't been that accurate yet since Humphrey out he was inaccurate that time he's exactly. bouncing one threw the ball into the ground well, they're both outstanding defenses, and it does have a tendency to really put pressure on the passing game. The fullback for Alabama, as we start this second half, is Bo Wright, number 40. He has replaced Doug Allen. And our spotter, Jimmy Tubbs, noticed that Allen was not on that kickoff team to start this half either, so we'll get an injury check on him. This is third and six. Shula under pressure, won't get it off, and he's wrestled down by Brian Habib, 91. Now, this is the best pass rush in the, wor in the world. Number 91 there wipes off right there, right straight in the face of Shula before Shula can get rid of the ball. It's a sack for Habib. That's the kind of defense Coach James wants, who in 12 years at Washington, has become the winningest coach of the Huskies. Remember those rumors that used to swirl about him going into the NFL? He's one of the more respected coaches in all of football. This is Moore, hunting again, and against a rush, he nails another big one. Oh, he threw Andre Riley back inside the 25. Now Riley, picking his way nimbly up the field, gets to the 44. That's another 18-yard return off a 57-yard punt. Eric, it's simply hard to get down and cover. He kicks the ball so Exactly. Far. He out kicks his coverage. The ball was still high. Gosh, it's tough to get down there that fast. He really is a fine kicker. Riley brings it back where it'll be first down for Chris Chandler. So you're watching the two teams that were runners up in the toughest two college conferences this year. Washington of the Pac-10. Chase Arizona State. And Alabama. Could not overhaul LSU and then lost its last game to Auburn. Chandler of the Huskies to put it up and into the face of Bennett. He throws complete to the far sideline. Brian Slater. And he was out on that far side. 
Well, he was out of bounds on the play. It's a, it's a bootleg play, fakes a sweep to the right, kind of naked here. Now he, right there, you, you see the throw, the watch, he's out of bounds here. It's just in, let's see, one, yeah, he is definitely out of bounds there. And there is our lovely Sun Bowl queen, Carrie Rubin. She has worked so hard for the last year promoting this game. And promotional tours all around the country as Vince Weathersby wrapped up by the heart of that defense. Derek Slaughter led the charge for the Crimson Tide. And Slaughter's had a good game, hasn't he, down there in that defensive line well, for very, Coach Perkins. Very well. Now here he comes out, number 65. They substitute in there with outside linebackers. They don't put defensive backs in on passing downs. Talking to Ray Perkins yesterday. They keep their whole secondary in. They bring linemen out. Bring outside linebackers in. Chandler has Hill. He'll be at the bottom of your screen. You're on the short side, standing up as the split end. Slater is up at the top. And they'll run Weathersby. Cuts back outside. Gilbert hit him first. And then number 34, Ricky Thomas, wrapped him up right there, midfield. Well, it was a passing situation. They run the drop play. Now watch the hole open here. They get a beautiful hole. It's a good call. Weathersby gets good blocking right up front. Look at that's perfect setup right there. Now Finney will he'll break off the left side. If he just stayed right up the middle there, Weathersby would have gotten much more yardage. And it is Cleveland's turn to punt here again. <laughs> Alabama sets a return. And it is down inside the 20 yard line. So a 29 yard punt by Cleland. And when you come back, Alabama will have the ball and a one point lead, 11 51 remaining in the third. Well, it's 7 6, Alabama with the lead, but their starting fullback hasn't been out there. And to find out why, let's go down to the field and John Dockery. John? Friend, I just talked to the team doctor and they said Doug Allen has a touch of the flu. He was a little bit weak, so he will play. He's not hurt, but they'll alternate fullbacks in the hopes of getting something out of him. He's a little weak with the flu. Now back to you. All right, John. Okay. Thank you. The fullback in Ray Perkins offense, and that is Allen with the jacket and he's back to you right there, number 46. The fullback in Ray Perkins offense, more of a blocker than anything else. Humphrey is the featured runner or jokes when they use him. This is Humphrey. Humphrey cutting back against that pursuit. Got all he could out of that particular run, squeezing it out to the 23-yard line. So you look at Humphrey, he's only a sophomore. You know that he's going to fill out that frame. He's 6'1", 187 pounds, and you think down the road a couple of years from now, and you just have to believe that he'll be a possible candidate for Heisman Trophy. You hate to put a jinx on any running back because of a knee injury or something like that, but he sure is spectacular when you watch him. They bring Bell in motion through the formation. Humphrey comes in that direction, and he is hit by that hard-charging Washington defense. Steve Roberts, 94, gets up on him. I think I'd do the same thing, get it in his hands, because Bobby Humphrey, because he is so dangerous, just as we saw in that short yardage situation when he went 64 yards. Hadn't done much up to that point, but give him one little scene, one missed tackle, and away he goes. This is third and four for Alabama. Shula with both wide receivers to his right. Top of your screen. Fell down. This is going to be incomplete. And someone may have busted the pattern on Mike that time, or there was so much heat, he just lofted it up over Richardson's head. Williams had coverage on that. It was hard to tell for sure. Let's take a look at Reggie here in isolation. Number 51 right here. Of course, he's been a big force during the course of the season, but he isn't contributing to the Huskies as is Cornelius Bennett for the Alabama team. You see him blocked off by Haas Johnson right there. Well, the Haas man, he's one of the veterans of that offensive line. They're not big folks, but they are plenty quick out of Alabama, and they're tough. This he is again. more man. Oh. What a Woo. leg he's got. And here's the young man, Riley. He can feel the punch like a center fielder and weaving his way back up field. That's a 61-yard punt and a 19-yard return. And era, that punter is from Ray Guy's 
hometown. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he must Moore is out of Thomason, Georgia. That's the same hometown as Ray Guy. I know so many of you have enjoyed his punting with the Oakland and the Los Angeles Raiders through the years. And, and there's a punter from the same hometown. Why is he booming that ball? Only a sophomore. Hmm. What a leg. All right, first down now for the Huskies. Trailing by a point, remember, only a couple of field goals. They haven't been able to score, touchdown, and they haven't been able to get it. Hands of Hill yet. Looks back the other way, throws the ball low. Weathersby reached down to grab it at his shoe tops. So this is the bowl season, and on Saturday, CBS will be taking you to Jacksonville for the Mazda Gator Bowl Classic, Clemson against Stanford. John Pay out because of an injury, but as Coach Parsegan told you, there's another fine quarterback there for Stanford. His name is Ennis. Then after that, I'll be in Louisville along with Billy Packer, and we'll show you the Battle of Kentucky. No matter how poorly the Cardinals have gone so far, they will play a fine game against Kentucky. Second down and eight. the fake Chandler took it away from Finney and he scrambles for the first down and that was Cornelius Bennett who put the saddle on him and rode him out of bounds but not before he gained 10 yards you see the fake held the interior line in the pursuit you watch Bennett comes right down to the inside he's faked out because he pursues so hard and of course Chandler keeps the ball but guess who's there to knock him out of bounds and take a look watch Bennett come right down to the inside here Go for the fake to the inside, then recover off of it, and go back and get Chandler and knock him out of bounds right here. He did make that fatal step by st taking it to the inside and had to give up a first down on it. Ball at the 45-yard line of Washington. Weathersby sweeping to the right against that. Loses it. Ball is down. And Alabama has recovered. There is a Ricky Thomas, I think, got the ball. Ricky Thomas wraps it up for Alabama. And what a big turnover. That is with Shula coming into the huddle. Looks like he's holding it. Oh, came from, it looked like the right hand of Ricky Thomas, number 34, and then the ball come right back for him right there. First down, Shula swings it to Humphrey. He blasts for eight yards. I'm going to tell you, I think it was the center, Wes Neighbors, who got outside after snapping that ball on that quick pass to Humphrey and threw a heck of a block outside. Now, Wes Neighbors is the son of the great Billy Neighbors. And he showed some of his daddy's ability to get outside and throw that block that time. Now they swing Humphrey the other way. You bet that is Wes Neighbors. He just threw another block over here. He comes out to the left-hand side. Now I know why he was the All-Southeastern Conference Center. He's number 54. There he is right there. Out of Huntsville, Alabama, 6'2", 250. You talk about quickness, Arrow. When a center can get outside ahead of a tailback on a pass play on one down and then get back over to the left side and lead that blocking, we're talking about real speed for an offensive lineman. And a great deal of durability has started 46 of the last 47 Alabama games. Now that's Zachary who is shaking up a little bit for the Huskies. Let's take a look at West Neighbors here coming to throw that particular block as he comes across. Look at him come out as he gets it done here. Humphrey coming up inside and look at Wes over there. Oh, he blocks Zachary. Beautiful job on Zachary. And the trailer coming in. Neighbor needs one more lineman with him. A little more help and they'd have had them both. All right, this is third and short. Neighbors goes right straight ahead with the drive block that time, and Shula comes up over the top of it. Let's go downstairs to John Dockery, and uh, speaking to the Neighbors family, you just knew who would be here today. Take it away, John. Of course, Billy Neighbors, Brent, not a bad offensive lineman himself at Alabama. 
What do you think? Your son playing well. Playing good today. They're, they're not moving the ball as good as it should be, but uh, he's playing pretty good. What do you see the key to the game at the moment? Well, the fourth quarter, and who can be able to move the, run the ball in the fourth quarter? You know, you're an all offensive lineman. That huge offensive line of Washington, is it wearing you down, Alabama at all? Well, I don't think so. They're substituting freely, and uh, I believe that they can play good in the fourth quarter. All right, let's go back up to you, Brent. All right, John, thank you. They swing it back outside to Humphrey. He is hit right now. Peoples. Now, Peoples missed the tackle on Humphrey that allowed him to go 64 yards for the game's only touchdown. Obviously, one of the assistant coaches had a little talk with Peoples, and he was not missing that tackle. Well, he did a good job of smelling it out. He's the free safety, and he came up immediately. He comes up and really does a job on this. He smelled it out. He was apparently in the free safety spot right here. And watch him recover as he comes up. Look at him go right now with Humphreys. Right there, boom. Negative yardage that time. Yeah, indeed. They're out one to four. They run the draw. They bring the fullback. That's Bo Wright. Reggie Rogers tackling him. Shula checking over at the sideline for the play that Coach Perkins wants run against Rogers and the Washington defense. Use all hand signals to get the plays into Shula. He's a very alert quarterback, as you would imagine, growing up in the household of Don Shula. He understands football, knows how to read defenses, has a great deal of freedom in changing the plays. And on this third down, Shula under pressure goes to Richardson. Touchdown, Alabama! Richardson of Mobile, Alabama, and Shula faced enormous heat that time as he released the ball. This is Van Tippen. Four years, he has yet to miss an extra point. At Alabama, you would make him the favorite to keep that string intact. Fourteen six, Alabama. Well, this is a marvelous job by Mike Shula. He gets a lot of pressure and gets a real shot. He has a presence to look for Richardson, who is broke right over the middle. There's the throw right there, right on the mark to Richardson, who beat his defender, number 25, Zachary Brooke, to the inside. But Shula really took a shot after he released that ball. It was a great throw on his part. It was an inside blitz. They came with both of the inside linebackers that time, and it was Erlitson who got loose along with Rill on him, and Shula getting back up, celebrating the touchdown. And the guys who blitzed him, they're still down on the ground. It's 14-6, Alabama over Washington. I think his daddy's not proud of him right now. Oh, you betcha. And it's the first time that he's seen him play. Now, what happened on this, Richardson, who's lined up right out here, comes down the field, makes a beautiful move here in Zachary, and then goes to the post. They're in man-to-man -man coverage, and singled, Zachary is singled on Richardson here. And you'll watch as he comes down on right. Right there, he makes the move with his left foot. You'll see Zachary right here is starting to his right. And then Richardson goes ahead and breaks right for the post. Zachary has to turn, but he is way behind him now, three or four yards. Shula throws a beautiful pass. Great coordination. Touchdown, Crimson Tide. And Tiffin will put the ball on the tee and kick it off as Richardson scores Alabama's second touchdown. And here at the John Hancock Sun Bowl, Bama leads Washington 14-6. 6.24 remaining in the third quarter. The deep men have moved up to the 10-yard line. Tiffin's kickoffs have not been sailing into the end zone. Would you know it? This time he drives him back down inside the five, and Steve Jones, the tailback. Leading to the far side. He's out past the 25-yard line, close to the 30-yard line. Now the pressure is on that Washington offense. And a reminder tonight, Christmas night on CBS. Simon and Simon and the General Foods Golden Showcase, the gift of love, a Christmas story. 
very special program for you tonight on CBS. Our prime time shows begin at 8 Eastern time. Jones stayed in the game as the tailback. Rick Finney, the fullback. Both of them are set behind Chandler. They run Finney. And he squeezes out the other end of that red defense. Tommy Cole, one of the backups for Ray Perkins, bringing him down. Gained three yards, and this will be second and seven for Don James, who has found it tough going here this afternoon against that Crimson Tide defense. So, so did all the other 11 or 12 teams that played them. I'll tell you who I appreciate more and more is Brent Fullwood Auburn after watching how this defense can operate. Quick drop by Chandler, quick pop, Lonzel Hill has got it for the first time, extending himself toward a first down with Britton Cooper over there on the coverage. So Lonzel Hill breaks the schneid here at the 5.30 mark. Just a quick pass right now, they got one-on-one uh, -on -one out here, but good recovery. Lonzel, watch him reach out with the ball to try to get that first down. Can't see it from this angle as Cooper gets it. And he did get that first down by yep. about a half an inch. Cornelius Bennett apparently is resting the series. Not out there right now. They bring Slater in motion. Chandler getting it into the hands of Jones, who turns and gets to the 48-yard line. It'll be short of a first down, but it'll leave them in second and short. So along with Aero Parsega, I'm Brent Musburger from the Sun Bowl in El Paso, Texas. Alabama with two touchdowns and the Huskies of Washington with a pair of field goals. The first touchdown was Humphrey's 64 yard run for Ray Perkins Crimson Tide. Then Jager kicked a 31 yard field goal. He added a second field goal and that made it 7-6. And then moments ago Mike Shula threw the touchdown pass to Richardson 14-6. Now we are here with a second and one. Off the delay and they cannot get past Cornelius Bennett who had come off the bench just prior to the snap. <laughs> he, he was he was back there as fast as Chandler was. <laughs> he was he really explodes off the line of scrimmage. Watch there's no chance at all. It's a little delayed draw here. Chandler goes back and there's right there's Cornelius making the play. <laughs> Third down and two. In case you joined us, he has played a spectacular game on that outside linebacker spot. He has been an impact player all game long. Chandler with time throws in underneath for the first down. He hit Weathersby. And it's into Alabama territory for the first down here at the 343 mark. Kind of interesting that time they had both Rod Jones and Weathersby in the same area. I don't know whether that was by design or whether or not it was an error on the part of one of the two. Chandler passing the play on to the Washington offense. Now he throws out of that formation and Slater had not turned around in time. He was cut off trying to run the option to the left-hand side. Well, he was trying to fake the option to go down to the wide side of the field, but there was so much penetration by the Crimson Tide that time, which was uh, Wyatt. Willie Wyatt came in, so he had to draw back again, and the pass receivers had their backs turned on him. James is, James is sitting there. He's saying, boy, they are quick. That defense can play. Got to figure out some way to do something, he says. Second down and 10 for the Huskies. Andre Riley comes in motion. Under pressure, throws high for Lonzel Hill, and it was almost intercepted by Kendrick off his hands. But he overthrew Hill, who was the intended receiver. See, the, the, the pressure that he has gotten during this entire game, I think, has thrown Chandler's timing off. See, the now he rolls out of the pocket, now he goes to throw, and you see he has the receiver, which is Lonzel open, but he overthrows him by a great, I mean, it must be two feet. 
Here's the guard, uh, the ground level again. He's forced out of the pocket under pressure. Sla Slaughter coming in there. Derek Slaughter. He's 12 of 28. This will be his 29th pass. And Cornelius Bennett sacks him for the loss. A seven yard loss. And what more can we say about him? Looks like he's playing by himself out there. I mean. <laughs> He's such an impact player in this game. I mean, Chandler can't, doesn't have a chance at all. Here he comes. Number 72, Gogan, who is 300 pounds, can't stay with him. He's too fast for him, runs right around him. And oh, like what's, that, what's that move? <laughs> this is Richardson who caught Shula's touchdown pass at the nine. Ball is loose. But Alabama retains possession. It's a 47-yard punt and a seven-yard return. The ball was loose. And Richardson went diving back in there. Along with a couple of his teammates. And Alabama will have possession when we come back. The big moments for the Crimson Tide here in El Paso. Knocking that ball loose, then recovering it. Set up their second touchdown. Alabama 14, Washington 6, 2.24 to go. And Humphrey explodes through the middle, out to the 30-yard line. Boy, he got good blocking that time. He popped right through the hole. You'll see it here from uh, the end zone. It's a little trap play. Look at that hole that he gets. Hoss Johnson, number 60, making a great block in there. And he picks up a first down on the play. See, when you give him a little daylight, he just explodes through it. That's his eighth 100-yard rushing game this year. He has gained 110 yards and 17 carries. Here he comes again, battling for more yardage. Brill bringing him down. He's had a great job, not only by Humphrey, but also Cornelius Bennett. Let's go downstairs to John Dockery, John. Friend, you and I have been talking about how great a defensive player Cornelius Bennett is and comparing him to Lawrence Taylor, rightfully so, but it's amazing that this great defensive player talked about playing tight end, talked about having dreams of going to the pros and being a tight end, talked about his great hands, about his blocking ability. It's amazing. The grass always seems to be greener on the other side. Now back to you, Brent. Yeah, typical defensive star. Always wants to carry the ball. Small chance of that off of what we're seeing. There's another good defensive play by Dennis Brown, 79, out of the Los Angeles area. He broke through that time and busted that play up. And good job, DB. Now it'll be up to that big Washington offensive line to see if they cannot give Chandler a little more time in the last quarter. It's about the only way the Huskies are going to climb back into this. They trail at 14-6. Alabama has had the defensive heat on Don James' team all day. On third and ten, Shula goes to the tight end, Stafford. 27 more yards for Alabama. That was the same pass that they threw early in the ball game that Mike Shula underthrew. You'll see him right here, and he comes right into this scene, and he's beyond the linebackers this time. Watch here. This release is off, gets past the linebacker, and Shula this time doesn't underthrow it, drops it in there for a beautiful pass. It's beyond the linebackers, in front of the secondary. Nice touch by Mike Shula. Now with the first down at the Washington 43. Shula throwing down the near side to Richardson, who is wide open. He's out of bounds at the 18-yard line. And Mike Shula, with 25 more yards, is starting to pick the secondary apart. Really is. He is. He's really hitting him. He just comes up the sideline here. I want to check the coverage here. He runs by the corner. The the, uh, the guy that appears to be double teaming him that's hall he just runs by hall hall doesn't drop to his area and really puts pressure on the deep man it'll be first and ten for the crimson tide <laughs> bell coming in motion richardson and it's humphrey touchdown alabama what a beautiful pattern 
He sent Richardson to clear that area out, and Humphrey came in underneath it, and Mike Shula delivered another strike, and oh, his papa has got to be loving every moment of this right now. Oh, we can say that again. touchdown 64 yard run and two scoring passes by Shula Mr. Perfect it's 21 to 6 and watching Mike Shula right now now this is a young man who did not red shirt Brett just exactly as you pointed out Richardson drives off and watch Humphrey just circle in behind him and come up the sideline. The key to this, though, is Mike Shula gets plenty of time to throw. You look at there, he's got beautiful protection right there, waits in the pocket, waits, waits, and finally Humphreys breaks down the field. There he is in front of number 11, the boy Williams, for the touchdown. I mentioned about Mike Shula. This is his fourth year at Alabama, and he will graduate. So he was not redshirted at all. He's a young senior, if you will. And if I'm an NFL team looking for a backup quarterback, and I know his pedigree, I got to take a look at him. This young man shows you something out there. He was three for three for 70 yards on that drive. And we'll be back with Alabama in control of Washington at the John Hancock Sun Bowl. Well, while we're away, or I think you said it best, that was an Alabama quarter here at the Sun Bowl. It certainly was, 129 yards. For Alabama and Shula, three for three on that last drive of 70 yards, while Washington was only able to muster 42 yards. Tiffin to kick it off. Fielded at the 10 by Jones. Jones out to the 31-yard line. Let's go downstairs to John Dockery as a special guest. John. Thank you, Brent. And this gentleman, Jeff Coleman, You've been to how many games from Alabama? Yes, this will be my 641st game. And every single bowl game, all 39. What one do you remember most? Well, I remember first the first Rose Bowl in 1926 with Washington, the team we're playing here today. That, that started it all. 20 to 19, we remember the score. You know, so many great athletes have come to Alabama over the years. Who are some that you remember most? Well, they all run together, but you played with some of them like Paul Crane and Namath and great quarterbacks like Stablin. Bob's there gone. have been a lot of good ones. Thank you very much, Mr. Coleman. Now back to you, Brent. Thank you, John. Here's a completed pass. Thrown to Jones by Chandler. What a remarkable performance that is as the time ticks away here in the third quarter by Mr. Coleman to have seen all of those consecutive Alabama games. And I'll bet he's enjoying this one right now. We finished three quarters. The Crimson Tide lead the Huskies of Washington 21-6. We'll be back after this message and a word from your local station. start the fourth quarter the Sun Bowl in El Paso Texas Alabama with the lead over Washington at 21 6 one of the big changes and differences between the college and the pro game that two-point conversion and how appealing that can be for the Huskies now if they can get into the end zone they run Jones for the first down if they can score twice hit those conversions that's a possibility of six points otherwise they'd be looking at a fourth quarter in which they would need three scores. Here are the numbers from the third quarter. Alabama putting 104 passing yards on the board in that quarter. Rushing, you can see that they went to the pass. And Alabama dominating the Huskies for those 15 minutes. They led 7-6 at the half, and they put two touchdowns on in the third quarter. So credit Ray Perkins and his coaching staff with the proper changes at the intermission. Chandler for Washington rolling out to buy time. He's got Lonzel Hill and a beautiful interception. Kermit Hendrick makes a sensational theft for Alabama. Six points, Washington written all over it. Great play by Kendrick. He just stretches out, dives, <clears throat> looked like a receiver on the play. You'll see it here as Chandler rolls ball. Now he looks back, and he sees he's got man open. Now he unloads the ball. Watch Kendrick come right there from your right, dive out, 
just lays himself completely. What a great play that is by Kendrick. There are his second interception as we take a look at that extension as he goes up after it. Kendrick with two great interceptions. He's a sophomore out of Meridian, Mississippi. Shula handing off the ball, and powering behind the hey, right Ma, side of that offensive line. I think he was saying Merry Christmas to his mom down there, I think. Uh, <laughs> they're a little happy down there on the uh, Alabama sideline, and justifiably so. They played themselves a whale of a game. <laughs> Second down and seven. Mike Shulip bringing Alabama up to the line. The Huskies. Has Alabama turned the ball over yet today, Eric? No, no turnovers. And they've gotten the ball three times from Washington. Well, that's Bo Wright. He's been the fullback here in the second half. Replacing Doug Allen, bothered by the flu. John Dockery told us that from the sideline. And that 11-yard run gives Alabama a nice first down coming out from the shadow of their goal down there. As number 54 neighbor, 46 starts for Alabama out of 47 games, doing a great job right there of blocking Albert, number 93. This is Humphrey twisting his way to the 26 with Reggie Rogers, 51, bringing him down. They've done a pretty good job of neutralizing Rodgers. Now, think back to the start of this game when you were with us. The Alabama offensive line was having a great deal of difficulty blocking Rodgers and his teammates. Remember Dockery told us that the coach sat him down on the bench and said, now what is going on here? Gave him a little lecture, and ever since that time, it's been a different offensive line out here for Ray Perkins. They've been much more effective. Here's Humphrey. Coming to the short side, now to the 33-yard line, and again, it was Reggie Rogers. So we've got three players here this afternoon who figure to be amongst the top 10 players drafted by the professionals when they come out of college, and one of them, Cornelius Bennett, may have even moved up. If it wasn't for Vinny Testaverde, I think we'd be hearing about the possibility of Bennett being the first player selected. That's how much impact he's had. And of course, a lot of the scouts will go to the senior bowl. And he reminds you so much of Lawrence Taylor when you watch him come from that backside, put the pressure on. So they come across the field to measure and quarterback Shula, Coach Perkins watching there. And he's got a couple of inches. And it'll be a first down. And near the conclusion of this game, Era and I will select a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the game from each of these teams. And Chevrolet will donate a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each school. There have been some standouts for Alabama, too, haven't there? Million dollar band in attendance here today, although one of the band members at our hotel told me it was the half million dollar band. They brought the upperclassmen in here today, and some of them have left back home. But They'll be going to a bowl game next year with this bunch, although they do graduate a lot of good players, don't they? Shula drops one, a nice catch by the tight end. That was a nice grab right down there by Stafford, the second time he has caught a pass. He's a junior out of Pritchard, Alabama, 6'5", 195 pounds. You know, uh, Mike Shula just doesn't make many mistakes. And he's bailed this Alabama team out during the course of his career on a number of occasions when they were behind going into that fourth period and not much time left on the clock and has turned the game around and he's been responsible for it. Now he's 13 for 24, as you see, and having a good afternoon. Second and three for Bama. Humphrey. It's to the 47-yard line. The possession game, keeping the ball away from the Huskies, who trail it 21 to 6. The offensive line now is starting to block well, and I'm sure Ray Perkins there is real pleased with what he has seen in the third period. There's some good adjustments that were made, obviously, because of the way they both not only passed the football, but now are running it. Telling his quarterback to take his time, run that clock a little bit. Humphrey grabs it. And he is to the Washington 45-yard line. 
You can see the surge now of the Alabama blockers controlling the line of scrimmage. And, of course, the runners, Humphrey and company, are taking advantage of it. 24 carries for 138 yards era behind this offensive line. Here's Condon, number 77, leading the play. Hoss Johnson, 60 behind him. The fullback right. And there goes the great runner, Bob Humphrey, picking up additional yardage. He has 138 now, is it? Yeah, Reggie Rogers shaking up here on the near side in front of the Alabama bench being tended to. Reggie came to Washington on a basketball scholarship. I remember watching him in a couple of games. He was a great rebounder, but he'd get about four fouls in six or seven minutes, as I recall. <laughs> we'll be right back. Alabama linebacker Cornelius Bennett, who has played a whale of a game. You know, Ray Perkins brought Lawrence Taylor to the Giants, and I asked him to compare Taylor with Bennett. Well, it's hard to do that and not get in trouble with one of them because I, I consider both of them great friends, but I think they're very similar, Brent. Uh, I think uh, Cornelius might have had a better senior year than Lawrence did at, at North Carolina his senior year. I think Cornelius probably has a half step or step of speed on, on Lawrence. But other than that, I think they're both great players, and the thing that impresses me the most about them is that they love the game. They practice every day during practice and every play in practice. They're trying to make the football team. But they just love to, they have a great burning desire to play the game as good as they can play it. And that's pretty doggone good for both of them. That's uh, great news for the quarterbacks around the NFL to learn that Cornelius Bennett has got a half step faster than Lawrence Taylor when he's coming from the backside. I'll bet everybody out there says, oh, joy. I can't wait for him to show up. On the second down, Bobby Humphrey is hit behind the line of scrimmage. That was Dennis Brown. He's a backup, and he's played quite well for the Huskies here in the second half. Number 79's made a couple of big plays for him. He's yes, a he freshman has. out of Los Angeles. So there's a young man that you folks up in Seattle can look forward to seeing as Reggie Rogers trots back onto the field. Brown goes out. The clock is inside of 11 minutes. It's 21 to 6. Another one of the great ones that you'll be seeing in the NFL. The NFL playoffs start up this weekend with the wild card games. On the third down, Shula, who's had a brilliant second half, he hits Humphrey right now. I'll tell you, along with me, a great running back. How about the way Humphrey catches the ball? That's a 16-yard gain. He's already caught a touchdown pass here this afternoon, thrown by Shula. And they try to cover him with Erlinson, number 46. The linebacker's not going to stay with Humphrey. You can see it right over the left side of your screen here. He'll, Humphrey will just turn inside of Erlinson. Erlinson right there, number 46. And there's no way he can cover him. You have to have a lot of respect for Penn State, folks. When you talk to this Alabama team, they say that's the only team that really beat them. They feel that they beat themselves. And their other losses against LSU and Auburn, they give Penn State an awful lot of credit. Mike changes the play at the line. Has a man open, and he overthrew Humphrey that time. Humphrey, I think, had broken inside. Mike thought he was going to go back out on the pattern <laughs> toward the sideline over there. But he had him wide open there. Wide open. They're just they're running beautiful routes against the defenses that they see. They read on the move. Washington try, has tried to camouflage their coverages. But as the receivers come off the line, they're able to read it and get into the open scene. Shula just overthrew him that time. In the second half, Mike Shula is 8 of 11 for 128 yards and two touchdowns. And in case you joined us a little late this afternoon, his father, Miami Dolphin coach Don Shula, watching him for the first time. He saw him in spring games at Alabama, but never in a regular season game or a bowl game. And his son hands off again to the workhorse, Bobby Humphrey. And that's a running back who will be featured by all the preseason football publications next year. A sophomore from Birmingham, Alabama, 6'1", 187. And for Don James, you'll be hearing about his junior quarterback, Chris Chandler, who's had a tough time, but it's because of the pressure that this Alabama defense has thrown at him. And this is a drive that's just keeping the clock moving for Alabama. Now they've got it inside of 920. Two receivers out wide to the left. They run back the other way. Humphrey is out of bounds at the 21-yard line. That was Tony Zachary, the cornerback, coming over on it. You know, the thing that we talked about at the top of the show, the important keys, Brent, 
Could Alabama maintain possession of the ball? Could they establish the running game? Shula came through with the passing game against the strong Husky defense. They did that. On the other side of the coin, we talked about whether or not this Washington offensive line could control Cornelius Bennett and company. And it's very obvious what has happened in this ballgame. They have not been able to do that. On this drive era, they've maintained possession for five minutes and 40 seconds. They'll measure for the first down here on the near side. Guess what? We've got a moment, Era. We should thank the committee down here in El Paso, the Sun Bowl Committee, and also the folks from John Hancock, the corporate sponsor for the first time this year. They have done a marvelous job in a high-class manner of presenting this bowl game. It has been a great time to be down here and celebrate Christmas with our friends in El Paso and enjoy Alabama against Washington. It's been, the hospitality has just been tremendous. First down and 10. Sweep the fullback. Cuts back inside. And Bo Wright hit as he gets inside the 20. That was Steve Alvord, who has played very well as the nose man for Washington. He's had his hands full with Wes Neighbors and straight ahead blocking, but he has stood out down there for the Huskies this afternoon. Now, how do the two halves compare with Shula, Eric? Can we take a look at that? Well, he's had a tremendous second half. As you see here in the first half, he was 6 for 15 and 51 yards. In the second half, he's an 80% passer, which is tremendous. Second and seven for Shula. Humphrey, one man to beat. He have got all the way, and by golly, he got away from him and got inside the 10-yard line. How about that? <laughs> he's going to be around for another two years for Alabama. And I'm, I'm sure that Ray Perkins and all the Alabama fans are happy about that. You can see what you've got to look at when Humphrey comes around the corner here, gets good blocking, and then he goes, puts a little move, fakes him to the inside. Zachary tries to hang on. He still shakes loose from him. Hey, I can uh, hear some folks back at Birmingham right now saying, why don't you save him a little bit? We, we got this one 21-6. Let's see Jokes a little bit down here. Oh, listen, Jokes is a good one, too. They have two great running backs next year. Shula with protection, and he hits Humphrey inside the five-yard line. Art Malone over there. So not only has Humphrey run for big yardage today, but he has also been a leading receiver. Four catches for 46 yards. You see, they just flood the side, the left side. Humphrey will come out right from that left halfback spot, break right to the outside into the flat. Look how cool Shula is. He sees him, just delivers the ball. There's nobody there. And they have to come up to support to knock him down. But not before he gets a first down at the four-yard line. Humphrey dives in for another Alabama touchdown. His third touchdown of the afternoon. Take a deep bow, Woo! Mr. Humphrey. We should have guessed a little something. You know, he was in the end zone 17 times this year. Let's not kid one another. This is what we talked about. Listen, when it comes to the MVP, the Chevy MVP for Alabama, it's your choice. I'm out. I'm <laughs> it's too many of them. Well, we're just going to have to cut it in half and give it to one Cornelius. Here he comes. When he sees the daylight, look at him. He launches himself right into the end zone. And Tiffin. Makes it 4-4 for the extra points, and it's 28-6, and Alabama closing in on a Sun Bowl triumph. The re reason this play is successful is Wright comes out here and blocks out, and he'll turn it right inside of it and go for the touchdown. As the contain man comes up, Wright will block him right there. And you'll see Humphrey take it right there to the inside, as number 40, Hall, a strong safety, is blocked out, and there he goes for the score. So the Southeastern Conference is going to put one away on the Pac-10 here as our bowl season is underway. Georgia came up a loser to Boston College, but Alabama is going to win one. We'll be right back. We'll have the chorus. <laughs> <laughs> Well, All it'd be right. a lot more fun if they were on yeah. the leading end of the scoreboard, but one of the great things I 
think about all the bulls and for these young men to have a good time at the end of the football season. And Steve Jones almost breaks one and brought down at the 37-yard line. Sunday, the wild card games come your way. And in the N NFC, it'll be Los Angeles and Washington from RFK. It'll be a tough job for Jim Everett. Can he stand the heat in RFK? That is one of the toughest places for a young quarterback to go and win a football game. Irv Cross will be down there along with Will McDonough. There's Bobby Humphrey who scored three times for the Crimson Tide. Seven minutes now. Washington with only two field goals. He'd like to get down there and get a touchdown if they can. And under heavy pressure, he gets it off to Jones. And that was Kurt Jarvis, the nose man, 95, who came in. Jarvis is going to be another player who Perkins believes can play in the NFL. If nothing else, Ray says any scout who does his homework might want to switch Jarvis over to the offensive side of the line and let him try it as an offensive guard. Well, he can play on either side of the ball, he was saying yesterday, and that shows a lot of versatility. Look at that possession time. Washington hasn't had much opportunity because Alabama's kept it and they put it in the end zone. It's been a showtime by Cornelius Bennett, who drops into pass coverage this time, and they throw in underneath. They're going to the tight ends now. Jones coming out. <laughs> you know, I just happened to think, Brent, that when I, my last game that I coached, which was in the Orange Bowl, as a matter of fact, it was against Alabama, and I was standing in the tunnel waiting for the uh, Rose Bowl to end up because our game was going to start then, and Don Shula brought down Mike Shula, and, and I met him at that time. I was talking to him on the field. He was nine years old at the time. <laughs> time does pass rather quickly. First down. Chandler handing off to Jones and he's wrapped up there at the 40-yard line. So the bowl season underway and already game I mentioned Boston College that was a thrilling win by the Eagles what a way they wound up their season this year San Jose State needed Eric Parsegan at halfback in that one they were lit up out there Mississippi over TCU here this afternoon looks like Alabama is going to win the Sun Bowl 610 to go they lead it 28 to 6 they have dominated and Cornelius Bennett has had a great afternoon Coming from the backside, couldn't get there this time. Diving catch by Lonzel Hill. What a great play, showing you the ability that has stamped him as a future pro. And he appeared to injure his wrist or something when he went down. Now let's get that score rushing. Okay. Mississippi defeated Texas Tech, not TCU. The same team we beat in the Sun Bowl here in 48. <laughs> We've been, we have been doing our best not to embarrass Texas Tech here this afternoon. <laughs> they drop it off to Finney. Gilbert has him at the 35-yard line. So with Cornelius Bennett leaving the Alabama folks wondering what they're going to do about linebackers, Greg Gilbert is going to be one who will be a star down there. And they've also got another young man by the name of Derek Thomas out of the Miami, Florida area. This is second down. Huskies trying to put together a touchdown drive this time. Chandler lofts one. Hell! Could not hold on in the end zone. You know, he might have been looking into the sun. He was looking right back at the right corner of this stadium. Although it looks like where he was was in the shadow there, wasn't it? Very close. Went right through his hands, yeah. isn't it? Very unusual for him. Because you made the comment as you were watching him practice. Didn't drop anything. Yeah, we watched the practice out here the other afternoon. He didn't drop a single ball that he touched. 4.56 to go. Huskies looking for their first touchdown. Third and eight. Get 
Chandler steps away from Cornelius Bennett, but not the second time. That ball was almost <laughs> intercepted. <laughs> I'll tell you, Anthony Smith needed a little war dance down there. What do you want that ball? He can see the goal line. He can run, too. Take a look at this heat. Jarvis coming through. Now watch Bennett. He's yanking him down. Smith, come on, let's go. Grab it. Cleveland to punt for Washington. 4.13 to go. Low snap. Gets off a high punt. It's been that kind of day for Alabama. Even the punts bounce their way. 21 yard. And we'll be right back. Ray can be awfully proud of this Alabama team. David Smith, his backup quarterback, checks in and number 13 pitching that time the tailback is gene jelks but a lot of tragedy surrounding this football team and a couple of players who died willie riles defensive tackle he died george scroogs was killed in an automobile accident and they have worn a couple of black decals on the back of their helmets honoring those two young men and this club played its first game back in August that was the game up in New Jersey in which they beat Ohio State it's been a long tough season for this ball club and uh, they have come through it very well this is the only team with nine wins not appearing in a New Year's Day game and they have shown their talent here today and some people have speculated that perhaps they even got a little bit tired late in the year they lost that emotional game to Auburn Brent Fullwood did a great job down the stretch of that boy you've got to admire his running ability after you watch this Alabama defense up close and how difficult it is to get anything going against him well I agree with that Fullwood had a tremendous day I don't know how anyone can run against this Alabama defense not many people did and as I pointed out earlier in the telecast they only give up 13 points a game that tells you a little something with a tremendous schedule that they play. Yeah, Smith bootlegging it around the left side. Stopped short of the first down by Daryl Hall of the Huskies. And the punting team back out again. It's been a long, tough afternoon for Lonzel Hill. Made one spectacular catch and then couldn't hold on to a six-pointer. Overall, he has caught two passes for 30 yards here this afternoon. And the sophomore punter, Chris Moore. With the celebration already underway down there in the Alabama sideline. Crimson Tide due to return home tonight. I'm sure they're eager to go home and spend what's left of Christmas with their families. Another booming punt by Moore. Riley, who has been a busy man hauling him back out of bounds on the far side at the 24-yard line. You know, the deep, the, uh, we'll come right back after this message. <laughs> it was a 48-yard punt and a five-yard return. Minute 38 to play, and we'll be back. The celebration underway on the Alabama side of the field. You could make an argument that Moore is one of the MVPs of this game. He has averaged with nine punts better than 46 yards. And keep in mind, one of them was a six-yarder. That's how well he has punted here this afternoon as Chris Chandler continues to try to get six. Lonzel Hill going deep, and he cannot hold on at the 25-yard line. There was one official down there had to move to get out of the way of that long ball that was coming down there. And that reminds me that the side judges, we take another look at this, era. He goes for the bomb here, just trying to get up the field. He gets a little better protection here. And there's the throw. Just overthrown a tad, but good coverage on the play. You know, I mentioned one of the officials there, as Chandler has the Huskies with the second and ten. Throws complete. Lonzel Hill's third reception 
but the side judge who is working this game, Bo Hicks, his father, 82 years old, suffering from cancer and in a hospital watching this game, and he wanted to pass along his best wishes to his father this afternoon. Swing pass to Finney. Gets the first down for Washington. One minute to go. Try to get that first touchdown here this afternoon. But before we went to commercial, I wanted to point out that Joe Times, the defensive coordinator of the Alabama team, you're going to take your hat off to him because while the offense of Alabama was trying to get on track in a sense in the first half, the Alabama defense dominated in the ball game, wouldn't let Washington do much. And finally, when the offense got going, why it became the the Alabama defense even became more dominant in the, in the ball game. So I personally think that this Alabama defense was the vital factor in the success of this game. Hill picking up another 17 yards. That was the 39th pass by Chandler. And that's a new record for the Sun Bowl. Incomplete and almost intercepted. Brian Slater, the intended receiver. Yeah. Well, we get official announcement that Cornelius Bennett has hey, been hey, voted Mom, be the most valuable player of the 1986 play. John Hancock Sun Bowl. And as Era said, it was that defense that created the havoc, and Bennett led the way in the first half. Second and 10, 43 seconds. Complete to Hill inside the 35 yard line. 12 yard gain. Now let's see if the Huskies can't wind up this game on a positive note and get a touchdown here. I'd like to see Hill snag one. Chandler throws for Jones underneath at the 30. 29 seconds left. And the most valuable lineman of this game goes to the nose man, Steve Albert of Washington. Cornelius Bennett actually captured both of them, but Alfred was second to him, and I want to make sure that one of the players is recognized on that Washington team. There's another outstanding performer today, Mike Shula, the quarterback who did it with his mother and father down in Dorothy Shula. On hand, Chandler into the end zone, overthrows Jones, the tight end. 22 seconds. So why don't we just go ahead and make it official. Our Chevrolet most valuable players of this game would be Cornelius Bennett, great linebacker for Alabama, and the nose man, Steve Albert of Washington. And a check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated by Chevrolet to each school's general scholarship fund to further assist qualified students in all chosen academic fields. And Wes Neighbors hugs his head coach, Ray Perkins. Neighbors, one of the few men left on this team who played for the legendary Bear Bryant. Dropped at the 20-yard line by Franklin. 16 seconds to go. And Alabama will wind up with 10 wins this year. Well, you got to call that a, an outstanding season to get 10 wins in your side. <laughs> Particularly the way the schedule, the schedule that they play. Listen, Alabama played one of the toughest schedules in the country. Here's the fourth down, the 16 seconds. Last chance for Chandler, and he will not get the pass off. He was slipping, and he simply could not get away from Anthony Smith that time. So the celebration on the Alabama side is underway. It was roll crimson tide here in El Paso this afternoon. There was never a doubt as the defense dictated how the game would go in the first half. And Bobby Humphrey exploded for that 64-yard touchdown. And then in the third quarter, Mike Shula, their quarterback, moves center stage. And Alabama will close out with a win. And that's two Sun Bowl triumphs for the center, Wes Neighbors. I can remember him coming in here and playing so well as a center against Carter, great nose guard from SMU that afternoon. They, lo they lose a lot of talent on the defensive side of the ball, but they got quite a few people coming back offensively, Brent. And 
And that'll do it. This game is history. Coach Don James goes across the field to congratulate some of the Alabama players and the Bama coach Ray Perkins. There are the two coaches.